generation underwater it's only one nothing like kicking your album off with a metaphor about spongebob billy woods doesn't really rap on beat his delivery is a little bit like spoken word in which his vernacular occasionally comes in line with the rhythm but otherwise it's all free game i think this makes his approach to rapping especially over the beats of kenny seagull in this case intriguing all the time as if the beats were more like backdrops for woods poetry which is actually how hip-hop works in general really um never mind i'm silly brawny bass lines build their foundation of the song guitars rise blare like sirens round the corner of the cul-de-sac i remember stacks together holds like cement between bricks that form the landscape of our homes and far beyond something like that I don't know. In this case, I'm drawn to the words even more. Seagull's eerie, desolate production leaves the album seeming a lot more dilapidated than usual, but not in the hopeless way, more like they've just given you pieces here and there, and the duo are trying to put them together, even inviting you to help. And group projects are hard, it's tricky work. I won't lie though, trying to find immediate meaning in Wood's esoteric imagery is like trying to find the prettiest looking part of your morning wheat bix. You'll probably find something after a good long look, but it's really more about how the whole package digests, and leaves you with this feeling that'll last with you throughout the day. Also, it pairs really well with Tinned Peaches. I don't make the rules, it just happens. His last project under his own name, Known Unknowns, definitely felt as if each track was contributing to a gigantic conceptual mural. And even that one seemed pretty fragmented, and only left you enough ambiguity such that you'd have to think a little bit more about it to string all of those abstract images together. Indie hip hop tends to be a little bit more about throwing those abstract ideas into the open, without too much organisation behind how they'll hit a listener. A lot of the responsibility is on you to sully some meaning out of their back pockets. Which is a fitting metaphor considering the theme of personability. It really seems like you're getting up close with Billy this time. Still not close enough to see his face, but nevertheless, and so close that Billy Woods is willing to be very revealing about his flaws and shortcomings as a person. It's not to get sympathy, it's not to ask for forgiveness, it's just being very honest and transparent about simply being flawed, because we all are. And what do we do when we're aware of our flaws? We acknowledge them, and we build upon them to better ourselves. The ambiguity is a little inconvenient, but I find that the creativity that's set into painting with words is always worth the uncoding. And now that we're dealing with tracks that actually are fragmented in presentation, a bit like bricks and pylons that are waiting to be stacked and cemented and nailed together, it's like I'm really being challenged here. I feel as if it's a project for already established fans who know they have the dedication to unpack these words, and yet still, do I know what he's getting at on Spongebob? Fuck no. At the very least, he does drop you some hints. Themes of secrecy and being underwater, in the dirt, lie on that track, which gives you the impression that Woods has some coded wisdom on things that are hidden from our view. Which is quite ironic, because it's not like his actual point is very clear either. A sense of humour is still present, but unless you're searching for it, I don't imagine you'll be latched onto it straight away. It's the beat that allures me, and keeps me listening. Always for the next little hint that Billy will drop, alluding to the greater picture of which he is trying to paint. I realise that's just how lyrics work in general, but Billy will Wood's delivery makes this a very therapeutic sort of listen. Each line is so boldly pronounced and laid out. It's like brick atop brick atop brick. Spider Hole gives you the wish of sheltering from the bustling horrors of the world sometimes, allowing him to shine a light on some of the absurder ones in clever ways. Woods tells higher class folk to stop pretending to speak for those with less privileged upbringings. The dilapidation of everything allows the music to feel as if it's slowly draining the humanity out of everything. Elsewhere you'll find pockets of clarity that help ground the message a little bit more. Red Dust is the track that really begins to show a lot of Billy's braver side when dealing with his personal flaws. It's worth noting that the lyrics brought up here about breaking bread with killers, rapists and pedophiles isn't a proud acclamation, at least not that I would hope, but the track deals with unsettling contradictions so often it's almost like Billy Woods is acknowledging that the industry he works in is likely filled with abhorrent people, either knowingly or unknowingly. The idea from this verse is that people can turn a blind eye to these things if it means they can fend for themselves in their careers. This is why the the second verse describes a complete lust for a woman in such a visceral and unpleasant way. It's pleasure for himself and not for the person he's with. It's a good chance he may not even be speaking for himself and maybe humanity in general. Humanity. Men. They don't tell you that in their raps, because they'd rather you didn't find out. One track on this album even derails a little bit from the overall mood by bringing in a strange futuristic synth-based smoke break with Mother Mary's feature, and that's on A Day in a Week in a Year, which I find to be quite jarring considering how genuinely wistful Wood's retelling during the first verse on this track is, stitching together a flashback to buying a fresh pair of Nike Airs to being amidst a thundering war zone, a verse that covers two sources of financial coverage at once, working a full-time job as well as participating in the military, and I can't say that 
Woods makes the latter sound very worth it. He also drops this absolutely chilling set of lines at the start of Houthi. Stood pooled in porch light, cut my shadow off with a dull knife, whispered in its ear, then sent it off into the night. Each next minute reveals a new loss of something close to you, before even your shadow feels detached. I suppose Woods attempts to bring you this feeling of volatility, especially from the viewpoint of a family that is nowhere near well off. Any more loss could cost them their livelihood. Expectedly, it's a tough album to sit through, let alone describe, and Siegel's production accompanies these eerie revelations in a appropriate times, at one point with a bleating guitar line that sounds like you're coming closer and closer to an answer, or maybe with crashing drums that ramp up the anxiety in a particular moment. To return to Red Dust, that as a closing track is especially gratifying as a result. The piano sounds like a sepia tinted photograph and provides the ambiguous closure of the clouds clearing up after an hour of heavy rainfall. I think that's what makes Hiding Places such a fascinating record to swing the doors back open for. Being so on brand for Billy Woods, it's not conclusive at all, but neither is working class struggle if you're trying to combat a system that crushes you if you can't make enough, or neither is our general moral response to abhorrent behaviour, especially when it cuts very close to you or your livelihood. There is a whole lot to decipher, as expected, and that's probably what makes me want to come back to it the most, unless you were switched it off halfway through track one. And in that case, I don't expect that you decoded anything at all. I think it's an 8 out of 10 though.